In this lesson, we are going to continue our study of comparative politics and look at the comparison between the US and the UK in terms of the legislatures. So we're ultimately asking the question, you know, what we uh, look, what are the similarities and differences between Parliament and Congress? Parliament being the UK's legislature. If for those who don't know, this is the UK's legislature, and Congress is the US, uh, USA. And just like with the Constitution video, we're going to divide this into two sections. We're going to talk broadly about the areas of similarities, where they both share similar features. And then in the next um, section, uh, we'll look at the areas of differences, where they are um, fundamentally different in their nature. And we will obviously be tying ourselves back to the concept of the Constitution, because the Constitution in both of these systems fundamentally lays the groundwork for the ways in which these institutions operate. So it doesn't actually matter um, ultimately um, what we're talking about because the Constitution's um, ground these, um, the, the powers of each of these institutions in very different ways. So when we talk about the areas of similarities, let's talk about the first one being that these are both legislatures for a start. And they both represent the supreme lawmaking authority of their respective states. OK, so if you think about it, we have in the UK, one of the main um, constitutional doctrines is the doctrine of parliamentary sovereignty, parliamentary, parliamentary sovereignty. And this simply states that Parliament is the supreme lawmaking authority in the United Kingdom. There is no other um, or lawmaking authority that has more power and has the ability to strike down any legislation by Parliament. Equally, though, Congress also has uh, also represents the highest level of lawmaking. So Congress, Congress represents the highest level of lawmaking in the in the extent to which it is the federal legislature. The federal legislature. The federal legislature. And so therefore, these are both similar in the sense that they both are the top level and the highest level of legislative authority that each of these two um, uh, institutions have. Equally as well, they are both bicameral. OK, and what do we mean by bicameral? We just simply mean in two chambers. So most cases of legislatures around the world are either bicameral or tricameral. They either exist in twos or they exist in threes. In the UK and the US, for example, we have um, uh, bicameral legislatures. So we have parliament. Parliament on the one hand. OK, which is divided into the House of Commons and then it's also divided into the House of Lords. Congress, on the other hand, is also bicameral, but it is divided into the House of Representatives, the House of Representatives and the Senate. So these are this is an area of um, where the two legislatures are very similar. They're very similar in the sense that they both have two chambers, an upper chamber and a lower chamber. However, we will find out that they are um, different in their extent to uh, in their ability. Um, uh, each of these chambers have in terms of political power. Both legislatures check and scrutinize the executive branch. I've put in asterisks at different levels, because we'll talk about that in a second. But they can both check and scrutinise the power and the authority of the legislature, uh, of the executive. Sorry. So this is done in the United States through a system of checks and balances. Through a system of checks and balances. So, for example, if we were just to draw the, the, the side of the triangle where we are looking at the separation of powers, we could have Congress on the on the top, and then we have the presidency down here. And we have a system where there are checks and balances across both sides. Okay, If you want to see more about this, check out our checks and balances video that we've already done. Equally, as well, Parliament has the ability to scrutinise the, uh, the executive in the state that they have the ability to question the uh, executive on a regular basis. They are also um, granted with the ability to um, check the executive directly through the fact that the executive in the UK sits in Parliament. There is a fusion of legislature and executive, whereas in this it's more done at a distance in the United States. They're both political in nature. And what I mean by this is they are both dominated by political parties. So they're both dominated by political parties. And 
uh, ultimately, the, uh, there's a slight difference in terms of the amount of parties that are represented in each of these two institutions. So, for example, within Congress, let me find some more room to do some more drawing. So in the case of Congress, OK, you really only have two political parties. You have the, the GOP or the Republican Party or and then you also have the Democrats or the Democratic Party. And that's it. But with the case of Parliament, um, there's less of a two-party system. So in the case of Parliament, while there is still slightly a two-party system, it's still slightly two-party in the sense that the uh, Conservatives and Labour seem to hold the majority of the seats. So we have Conservatives on the one hand, and we have the Labour Party on the other hand. Okay. We also have other parties. So, for example, we have the Liberal Democrats, uh, the Lib Dems. We have uh, one of the more major parties, but um, not necessarily across the entire United Kingdom. We have the SNP, the uh, Scottish National Party. And then there are other uh, more minor parties. Uh, for example, the one seat that is held by the Greens, uh, the Green Party, etc., etc. So while there is a heavy emphasis on the fact that this these two are, are the two major parties, the two largest parties, with the Lib Dems and the SNP coming up um, second, uh, coming out, uh, you know, in a third and fourth, um, the extent to which these are similar is the case that they both have political parties that represent and dominate the legislative process. And that is one of the things that is similar with these two systems, although, uh, albeit a more um, partisan, a more, a more binary decision to be made when you have the GOP and the Democrats in Congress. Finally, they're both legislatures that are representative in nature. I'm going to add an asterisk there as well because this will get on to the fact, uh, 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 one of the key differences. But they both elect, we both elect um, representatives to these bodies. Okay, so uh, representatives are elected. Representatives are elected to both of these institutions. So in the United Kingdom, we have elections to the House of Commons and not to the House of Lords, something that we will look at in a, in a couple of minutes. And then in the US, you have elections to both the Houses of um, Representative and also the Senate. So these are areas where there are similarities. They're both um, representative. Um, they're both uh, yeah, elected using representative democracy, effectively. Let's talk about the areas of differences. Let's have a look at what these are. Well, for one, one major area of difference, it relates to more the nature of the U.S. Constitution compared to the United Kingdom, because because of the United, uh, the nature of the Constitution in the USA, legislation can be struck down if it is unconstitutional. So while we said over here that these both are the supreme lawmaking authorities in their respective states, and that's true, the extent to which Parliament is limited by any outside factors is very different to that of Congress. So Congress, so while these are both, so while Parliament, Parliament and Congress, and Congress are both the supreme legislative authorities, okay, Congress is beholden to the US Constitution, okay, whereas Parliament is beholden to nothing. There's nothing up here. There is nothing that Parliament is beholden to. Even the U uh, e European Union law or um, the, the Human Rights Act, for example, these are arguably um, restraints on parliamentary sovereignty from a technical political standpoint. But from a legal standpoint, there's no there's no uh, there's no limit to what Parliament can and cannot do in terms of lawmaking. Whereas, despite the fact that Congress is still the highest lawmaking institution in the United States, the federal legislature. It is still, nevertheless, um, beholden to the rules and the regulations that have been in place and that have been codified in the U.S. Constitution. And that's where there is a key difference. This is a key difference between the two. Parliament can do effectively whatever it wants in terms of lawmaking. Congress um, is still the highest lawmaking authority in the, in the country, except it cannot do whatever it wants because it has to be in line with the U.S. Constitution. Again... Another difference is, unlike the US system, the UK system does not have two directly elected chambers. Okay, so again, Parliament is made up of the House of Commons and the House of Lords. So we have the House of Commons, we have the 
House of Lords. This one is elected by the people. This one is not elected by the people. Now, if we were to be doing this uh, 100 years ago, uh, we would be having this exact same... We would be including this uh, section here in the similarities box because originally the Senate of the US... Uh, the US Senate was not an elected representative. It wasn't elected directly by the people, but now it is due to um, constitutional amendments. So... Oh, that's the House of Representatives, should I say, and the Senate. These are both elected um, institutions. They are elected on a um, on terms of two years. So the House of Representatives has uh, elections every two years. The 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 they correspond. Um, once with the presidential election and then you have what are called midterms the midterm elections are in 2022 and with the senate we have a very interesting system where um, we have this exact same thing where there are elections every two years but it is only one third of the senate that gets um that is on the ballot at any one point which means that the senate um the, the, the term years for senators is actually six years altogether because it takes, um, you know, it takes three, um, <laughs> three goes, three election cycles for you to, um, for there to be a, uh, for you to uh, have your term run out effectively. One of the area of difference is that due to the relative power of each chamber, Congress, in Congress, issues can become deadlocked. So in the um, system that we have in the United States, the House of Representatives and the Senate, at least from a legal standpoint, are relatively similar in their uh, in their political power. They both have similar amounts of political power. This is completely different in the UK system, because in the UK system, as a result of the fact that the House of Commons is the only one that is elected, and as a result of the uh, subsequent Parliament Acts that have been passed in 1911 and 1945, the House of Lords is significantly weaker than the House of Commons. And we can also include things such as like the Salisbury Convention, which severely, um, even more, it, it, it limits the, the, uh, pa the power that the House of Lords has. So all of these things mean that the House of Lords cannot uh, block bills for, for any uh, real amount of time. Uh, this can be overruled by any kind of vote in the House of Commons. The fact that the House of Lords cannot um, scrutinise or at least cannot block any kind of bills that um, are part of the winning party's manifesto pledge, that's a Salisbury convention, all of these things mean that the House of Lords is significantly weaker than the House of Commons. But due to the fact that Congress has the two houses that are relatively similar in their, at least constitutionally in their in their political power, okay, this means that there can often be deadlocks between the two um, between the two houses where there cannot be agreement on these different things, and this also extends between Congress and the presidency. And the presidency, uh, the longest deadlock in history, that happened a few years ago uh, when uh, Congress refused to um, provide any kind of funding for our president, uh, former President Trump's um, border wall, and it led to a, a deadlock. And the budget was not something that was uh, able to be um, re resolved, and, recon uh, and there was no reconciliation. And ultimately, the government shut down for a period of time. So this is what happens in the in the U.S. system. The final power that we can talk about and the final key distinction is the power of impeachment in the u.s system so while in parliament you have the ability for parliament to issue what are known as votes of no confidence so a vote of no confidence this is a vote of no confidence in the government okay and so a vote of no confidence could take place and this will lead to a number of, a, a number of steps to take uh, that will that will then go on to um, either oust uh, the government that we have or maybe even um, you know replace the government or even uh, lead to a general election this is what happens when we have cases of votes of no confidence however in the US system we have the power of impeachment and the power of impeachment uh, ultimately uh, is directed against a single individual a single individual, whereas the power of the vote of no confidence is against the entire government. It's against the entire government. And so therefore we have a slight difference in the ways in which uh, Congress and Parliament can, uh, can scrutinise the executive in their ability to impeach or their ability to remove or in their ability to issue votes of no confidence.